Happy Homebrew Wednesday, folks. Ryan here, enjoying some British bitter. Yeah, I know, this stuff just will not go away, no matter what I do. But it's okay. It's a pretty good beer. I'm actually, I actually am getting short. I'm running out. Soon I will not have any more of this left, but <clears throat> it's really good beer. Finished off the pig. Um, probably just had a few bottles left. Most of those... Most of it went into big liter bottles. I'm kind of, I think I'm just taking off the, drinking the small bottles right now. Ah, so I had an awesome homebrew moment tonight. Walked into the apartment after work. Took a whiff. Just a little, what's that smell? It smells like oatmeal cookies. Mmm. Go for some oatmeal cookies. Fortunately... It was no meal cookies. Fortunately, it was beer. Yes, oatmeal stout. Brewed that this weekend during our little blizzard on Sunday. Yes, I was in all that crap. At one point, you just couldn't see anything over the deck. I mean, just you could see the edge of the deck. My pet by balcony. I have a balcony, third floor. And um, anything past that, sorry, that was my phone. I really should shut this thing up. Let's just see here. Anyway. So, which reminds me I should kill Facebook because someone will message me on there too just to make noise. Anyway, so I couldn't see anything out. out past the balcony except for just white. And that lasted about 10 minutes. Then we had just a lot of wind and some snow coming down after that. It's not a big deal. Anyway, Friday night, got some new toys. Probably a hundred plus dollars worth of stuff for about $40. Let's go take a look. All right, so got some new toys. Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, and five party pigs. Got them for a friend of mine. He's not brewing a whole lot anymore. Oh, I got even another thing. Let's go take a look. This is one of those things that you really start feeling like a home brewer when you have one. I don't know if you can see that, a glass carboy. This has the oatmeal stout in it right now. I kind of wish I could turn on a light for you. Let's see, maybe I can get the, this light on. A little, little brew hauler on there. I bought, I bought the brew hauler myself so that I could pick it up and carry it. It's now the easiest fermenting thing that I have to carry. Um, let's see. I got all the valves and for all the party pigs so you can you know dispense liquid probably looking wonder what is this thing well, this you set your empty pig in there about four dollars uh, normally and then you can fill your beer and then this guy is just a carrying thing you set the pig in you put the strap on and this is just a stand no strap but it keeps from rolling around. You know if you have a pig that you just, you know, you always leave it in the fridge or whatever. You don't ever take it with it. You don't really need the strap, but straps are nice. Um, let's see. That's a, I think that's all I got, so there we go. Well, so yeah, my buddy is not really brewing anymore, and so I went to his place. Uh, he he was the one that let me borrow the first pig, the one that had the pale ale in it right now, which at one time had this stuff in it. So I'm gonna have to get some pouches because I don't have any at all right now. Um, went to his place. I was like, "Hey, I'll buy a couple off of you." Ended up buying the whole lot. And then he has glass carboy. Practically got that for nothing. You know, he's a way nice guy, and. So naturally, it ended up costing me more money because it's like, oh, I need a way to dry this thing. So I got the, you saw one of the pigs on the blue carboy stand. Um, went and got that. 
Then I got the um, <clears throat> brew holler, so I carry it way. Definitely something you have to have. You can't pick those things, those glass carboys up by the handle if you have a handle on it. I mean, you can you can pick them up when they're empty, but don't do it when they're full. I mean, you would have about forty extra pounds. You could have forty pounds of liquid in there, and you pull it up by that handle wrong, you just shattered your. You could shatter your. Um, carboy however i have seen videos where i have seen people carry them with it which scares the crap out of me do any of you do that you know comment below or something that that i've always been told not to do it i've seen it been done but i'm not gonna risk it no reason to get a brew holler just like it's like a little harness that goes around it two big canvas straps on it. you just pick it up way easy I mean, I could stand hold on to the carboy for a few minutes if I had to with that thing. It's pretty nice. Um, what else we got? Oh, so one thing that always kind of bugged me that I've heard. And I really don't know if it's right, if it's wrong, if it's something that was made up. But, um, so we have the different styles, or different, not different styles, but different methods of brewing, I guess you would call it. We have our all grain. Which, you know, is pretty self-explanatory. All your fermentables are grains. You have your partial or mini mash. Where you have some extract and some fermentable grains. Now, I've heard one person on YouTube, and this is no offense towards them or anything. I am purely trying to get an answer on this. Who uses the term partial extract? Now I used to use that and actually meant partial mash or mini mash because I had seen partial extract somewhere, or, you know, I got in my head somehow. Well, he uses and this. Well, I'll tell you up top. Talk about Craig from Craig Tube. I like Craig. I, I watch all of his homebrew Wednesday videos. I li watch his cast and listen to the music on Friday nights. Great guy. Thanks, Craig, for doing that. It gives me something to do on a Friday night. And, well, middle of the week, too, watching your Humber Wednesday videos. Um, but he used the term partial extract when talking about brews that, have, that are mostly extract but have specialty grains with them. Now, a lot of things that I've seen, that's still just an extract. And then usually what he's referring to extract is from what I tell like the pre-hopped kits and or maybe just you know any recipe that to just extract I guess so I, I just kind of wonder what other people's thoughts on this are if anyone's ever really put thought into this you know I now when I hear him say partial extract I know exactly what he's talking what he means but try to google that I mean really you can't find much I couldn't find much about it I don't know if it's really a made-up term or Craig heard it from someone else or what so go ahead comment I mean, I don't know, I'd like to know what people think, if other people have heard of this term, or if you've never heard this term before. Um, stupid thing like that bug me. I've only ever heard it from him, but, you know, I'm sure there's other people who use it too. I, I just haven't heard them. So. Oh, this is a good beer. This, I guess, would technically be a partial extract if... If that term is a correct term. The guy's really, I mean, he's a smart guy. He's homebrewed for a long time. He's, and he's always learning. He knows he's always learning. He's probably, you know, so he does all sorts of stuff. I've watched his whole grain videos. I watch him do partial mashes. I like the guy. So, this is no offense towards him. I mean, I hope he comments. I hope he sees this and comments below and says something. Anyway, what else do I got? I don't think I really have much else going on this week. So we brewed the oatmeal stout. Um, I'm going to put the pale ale, put some bottles of pale ale in the fridge. Um, I wasn't going to put the pig in. I tried one bottle that of the pale ale that had been uh, conditioned for about a week. Oh, it was so good. It was carbonated perfectly it was great I, and i was gonna put the pig in but i was like see this is a bigger vessel i don't know if this will need more time um so i decided not to i'll i'm gonna just put bottles in for now 
lose a few bottles, whatever, they are not carbonated, right? Which I'm sure they will be. Not a big deal. Put two and a quarter gallons of beer in there and it's flat. Gonna have a bad time. Let's see. Oh, and back about Craig quick. He got me to try a, a Cooper skit once. I mean, just because I watched his videos and I saw him. He was using those in the first uh, basic home brewing videos or easy home brewing video series. Uh, so I was kind of curious about these pre hopped Cooper skits and mutton skits. So I went, well, okay, well, I'm going to go try one. So I got the real ale kit. Uh, I brewed this last fall. It was pretty good, a little hard to drink. Um, so this brings up another thing about why was it hard to drink? It tasted great, but like if I tried to take too big of a gulp, it just, I don't know, it kind of got stuck in my throat a little bit. It was a little weird. I don't know if it was like too much maltodextrin or something. My theory is, and someone else has mentioned this when I've brought it up before, it was, it was overcarbonated. This was the first beer where I've used the full, usually there are five ounce packets of priming sugar that come for taking a bottle. Um, I have religiously up until that one beer had done two thirds of a cup. I did not never put the whole thing in there. Even the brewer's best kids that say just put priming sugar in there. They don't tell you how much. Just put the priming sugar back. I don't do it. Don't do the full back. I will do two and third cups. You get just the right carbonation. Some beers is too much. Um, all those dark those dark porters I've done where after a few weeks you got a little bit of a mess because there are just fizz everywhere. Um, so what do you do? How much, how much sugar is the right amount of sugar? I always use two thirds. I know some recipes, you know, even want less, some want a little more, but I just do two thirds straight. And then, I, you know, my sugar lasts a little longer too. So that five ounces, yeah, I only use two thirds of a cup, but now I got that towards the next batch that I'm going to do. And so then the next bag, man, I may be able to get, since I used the leftovers for the first one, the second bag, I may get another batch out of it, full batch out of that one. So, yeah. Anyway, I do want to do a, a Cooper's or Munson's kit again. They're really simple. They're about, take 20 minutes or so. And seriously, you don't count sanitizing stuff. They're kind of fun. And also, they are really, really clear. That real ale, I could just see right through that sucker. I was how did they do that? Because my tap water is all minerally and it's a little, it's a little hard. But... Wow, got clear beer out of that. It was amazing. It's the clearest homebrew I'd ever seen. I mean, this is not clear, but as our friend would say, it has balls. It is. Oh, it's so good. I, I do like this one. I will. I would make this one again if they had it. This is the local homebrew shop recipe. So that's. Oh man, it's so good. Well. I think that's all I have for you this week, folks. Take it easy. And as, let's see if I can go through what everyone would say. Cheers, 17. Brew beer. Brew really good beer. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. And I really need to come up with my own. Uh, just drink beer. See you later, folks.